<laughs> this is a fantasy world with races from all across the board. From elves to orcs, lamias to centaurs, fairies to cat girls, pretty much every species you can think of exists here. And what does that mean for a couple of perverted horn dogs who think with their lower head more often than not? That's right, absolute paradise. In this world, the sex industry is a very common one. Many brothels exist here with a specific theme, or rather species running each. The ladies inside are known as Saku girls, and our two supposed heroes are a man named Stunk and an elf named Zell. Today, the two can be found arguing about a pretty serious topic. Which one is better, elves or human milfs? While Stunk firmly believes in the former, since they look good no matter what, Zell has a different opinion. Rather than looks, he's more focused on the quality of their mana and finds a heavily wrinkled old human woman to be far more attractive. Unfortunately for Stunk, their friends at the Ale and Eats Tavern actually side with Zell, making him question life itself. Later, Stunk and Zell end up saving a little boy named Crimvale, who turns out to be an angel. When Krim asks to stay with them till his powers are restored and he can go back to heaven, the two add a condition. Once he's healed, Krim has to take them to heaven so they can experience some angel woman. To cement their newfound friendship, the duo take Krim to a cat girl brothel, where his innocence is thoroughly shattered to the point of no return. Yep, my boy Krim is pure no more. Another day, Stunk and Zell receive the payment for their latest job, a review of an Octogirl brothel. Evidently, being a pervert pays pretty damn well. Quickly, they recruit Krim to join them on their exploits and head out to find a new Saku Girl species. Two weeks later, the trio return with some exceptionally lewd reviews for a bird woman brothel. The same species as the tavern's barmaid, Madri, who is absolutely mortified by the things they've put in their review. While she knocks the crap out of Stunk, the foundation is set regardless. The trio, who shall come to be known as the Inner Species reviewers, have been united. While having dinner at the inn, Stunk, Zell, and their halfling friend Kenchal get into a debate about size. Yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. In the middle of their debate, they see a group of fairies at a nearby table and decide on the next brothel they'll review. Later, the group plus Grimm head to a fairy brothel. Thanks to his share from their last review, Krim is happy to see he can afford to join the group's activities regularly. That is, until he gets totally scammed. Due to the size of fairies, it turns out that there are limits on the size of customers as well. And while measuring their meat scepters in the most lewd way possible, the owner tells Krim none of her girls can handle what he's packing. Meanwhile, Stunk gets stuck with an absolute whale. To Krim's embarrassment, news of his monstrous meat mallet spreads quickly the next day when everyone becomes fascinated by him. Another day, the group are approached by a representative of the Demon Party during the latest election campaigns. He explains the low popularity of their race and requests the reviewers to visit a demon brothel since every species they review see sees a rise in popularity. After hesitantly agreeing, Stunk, Zell, and their beastman friend Bruce head to the brothel recommended by the representative. On their way there though, they end up being distracted by the sheer nature-defying monstrosities that are Minotaur mommies. Following after the Minotaur girls they see, the group are treated to a night full of fun and milking. And yes, that goes both ways. The next day at the inn, Stunk and Zell make sure to tell Krim what he missed out on since he chose not to join them. As Midri comes in to stop them from corrupting Krim further, Stunk goes on to hit on her only to be bashed clean into the ground. While having drinks at the inn, the reviewers overhear a nearby group talking about looking at things from the perspective of their female partners. Inspired by this, they decide on the latest brothel they're going to review, a gender swap inn. Together, Stunk, Zell, Krim, and Kanchal head into the inn where they're each given a special potion. By drinking these, their bodies are transformed completely into female versions of themselves. While Stunk and Zell both end up looking like total bombshells, Krim and Kanchal don't see much of a change besides their junk vanishing. With the most important part out of their way, the women are led into a back room where they're to decide on the Saku girls they each want. 
While being teased by the others, Krim decides to leave but is instantly stopped by the innkeeper. Turns out, people have used the benefits of gender swapping here in some pretty messed up ways in the past. From sneaking into women-only areas to tricking men into sleeping with them. Because of that, now no one's allowed to leave the inn till the potion wears off. With nothing else to do, Krim joins the others as they pick out their girls. Stunk goes for one of his favorites, an elf. Kanchal picks out a halfling and Zell goes for a slime girl. Krim's choice is the one that leaves everyone lost for words later on. Stunk and Zell have always felt like Krim acts a tad bit, well, gay for lack of better words. But after their night is over and the reviews have been posted, their suspicions are pretty much confirmed. The Saku girl Krim chose, a hyena, has an even bigger dong than the males of her race. The reviewer Trio plus Bruce are browsing the Succubus district in a search of a new brothel. While Krim suggests visiting one of their regular spots, the rest ignore him. Stunk points out a road they've never gone down before and the group sets off. On this road, they see an advertisement that stops them in their tracks. For a ridiculously cheap price, there's a brothel where they can enjoy purebred Lilin girls with no time limit. Deciding to check it out, the group heads to the brothel in the advertisement. Once they enter the brothel, they quickly find out why the prices are so low. On the other side of a wall-sized window inside, a virtual army of thirsty, absolutely ravenous succubi are dying to wring out the bodily fluids of any man who so much as breathes the same air as them. It turns out they are actually the ones who pay to keep the brothel operating, which is why they don't need to raise their prices. The owner does her best to let Stunk and the others know that if they enter the Lillen room, they are solely responsible for their own well-being. No matter how tired they get, no matter what happens, they won't let the men go until they're satisfied. Even if they die, they won't bat an eye. Sure enough, Krim decides the whole thing is way too depraved for him and hangs back. The others, however, are more than up for the challenge. After having Zell buff them up with ridiculous levels of support magic, Stunk, Bruise, and Zell walk into the room. What follows is a cornucopia of depravity that not even the filthiest of minds could probably cook up under normal circumstances. The reviewers are completely squeezed dry for hours. They're only saved from death when an army of pigmen show up and the Lilin throw the reviewers out in exchange for them. Afterwards, the Lilin brothel gets a solid review of 1 out of 30 when the three men's scores are combined. One particular morning, Krim is tasked with securing a firestone for his landlady. At her advice, he employs Stunk and Zell as his bodyguards to head to the volcanic region where they are found. On the way, they easily dispatch some magma monsters and Zell reveals Stunk was actually a super strong warrior from a young age, even beating knights as a kid. During their time at the volcano, the reviewers end up at a salamander establishment where they can cook barbecue straight on the body of a flaming hot salamander woman. Unfortunately for them, the sheer heat of the woman makes them incapable of doing anything further with her. Krim, on the other hand, doesn't have that issue. As an angel, he's completely fireproof and goes on to have one of his most sensual experiences ever with the woman. Damn, even angels fall. Stunk, Zell, and Kanchal are in the end teasing Krim about the salamander lady, something they've been doing since the day at the volcano. Suddenly, Midri comes up to them with a bag full of gold coins and tells them someone's put in a request for them. Strangely enough, the request is just to review a Cyclops brothel. Like any at all, no specific place or type of girls, they just want a Cyclops brothel review. Confused yet not wanting to pass up money and milkers, the group set out on their latest quest. That night, the reviewer Trio and Kanchal enter a Cyclops brothel where they are told the main selling point of the place is the size of the girls. To their disappointment, the size in question turns out to be that of their eyes, not other stuff. Lucky for Stunk and Zell, they strike the jackpot anyways when they ask for the girls with the smallest, most normal eyes. Those girls turn out to be complete bombshells, with submissive personalities to boot since smaller-eyed cyclops are looked down on by their own race. By the time they're all done, Stunk, Zell, and Krim have nothing but glowing reviews for the place. Although Krim definitely got into some weird shit. Kanchal on the other hand, well, he didn't have the best time. Poor guy impulsively asked for the biggest girl there is and ended up in a really weird spot. 
Another day, Zell is having a strong craving for mushroom and suggests heading to the elven forest to gather some tasty ones. When they ask Krim if he'd like to join, the angel misunderstands and asks if they're heading to a mushroom girl brothel. Instantly, the reviewers' minds are changed and their focus is shifted thanks to the angel they've turned into a total pervert. It's time to go to the Mykonid forest. Sure enough, the guys have a total blast. Once they're at the forest, the Mykonid brothel owner assigns each of them the perfect girls that match their taste. Thanks to her age and experience, she can spot what one's preferences are from just a glance. From the slimy Mykonid, Stunt gets to the older sister types Zelgot. They are the perfect matches. When it comes to Kryn though, the owner is stumped. She can't come to a decision because of just how much there is going on with the angel, not to mention she's never actually met one before either. Luckily, her intuition allows her to pair him up with a girl that brings out something in him that's never happened before. A dominant side. With that, all of the reviewers have nothing but praise for the latest establishment that's been added to their list. Completely stumped over which species they should visit next, the reviewers take Nidri's suggestion to just choose whichever one enters the inn next. To their horror, this turns out to be a golem. On the verge of laughing her guts out, Midri happily sees off the reviewers, having the time of her life. Luckily for the boys though, the golem brothel turns out to be a place where they build their own golem according to their tastes. Delighted, the group got to work. Eventually, they're on the verge of giving up after failing to make anything cute. They're saved, however, by their guest reviewer for the day, Ken Chow. It turns out the halfling is pretty talented at this and has made Midri. He made an exact replica of Midri, and at the other's request, he makes more copies for them. Each of them go with different personality models for their Midri copies, each as depraved as the other. While their reviews for the place are glowing, they themselves all end up in a bloody mess when the real Midri finds out. A few days later, Krim finds himself feeling really downtrodden due to the influx of dark attribute customers from the demon realm. Deciding to help him out, Stunk and Zell suggest going somewhere to soak in tons of light. Of course, with this bunch, there is only one thing that they can be talking about. A brothel. Specifically, a Will-O-The-Wisp brothel, where the Saku girls shine with an insanely bright light around their private bits. This is due to the unique physics that apply to their race and even extend to their customers when inside the brothel. Unfortunately, while they're very beautiful, their unique feature makes it impossible to stay in a closed room since it would blind everyone involved. Because of this, the activities in the brothel all take place out in the open entrance hall with no dividers between the customers. As expected, while the experience itself is enjoyable enough, none of the reviewers have a particularly high score for the brothel in their final review. Krim, in particular, is absolutely mortified at having done it around other customers and gives them a straight zero. After what he's been through, Krim ends up even more depressed than he was before going to the brothel. And with that, our recap for today comes to an end. What a crazy anime that just goes to show that human imagination and lust has no limits. Tell us in the comments, would you be down for a job like this? Uh, who am I kidding? Of course. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, drop us a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Anime Soreo for more awesome animes like this recapped on your feed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.